Welcome to Retro Crisis. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can download, install, and use Aris, which is a multi-system emulator similar to RetroArch. So first thing you want to do is go to eris-mu.net, and as you scroll down, you'll see a list of all the systems that are supported by Aris, which is quite a lot, actually. And as you can see, some of the emulators are still kind of a work in progress, and you'll see the word experimental written beneath them. If you go back to the top and go to compatibility. Here you'll be able to see all the systems and where they are in terms of compatibility with games. I quite like this actually. I do admire how transparent the project is with its compatibility. For example, if we scroll down to PC Engine CD-ROM 2, here we can see how many games are completable, in-game, starts, nothing and untested. So if we go to completable and click that, here you can see a list of all the games that are tagged as completable. Anyway, let's go back to the top and let's go to GitHub and this is the project's official GitHub page. Let's go down to releases and then find the latest version, which is written in green and then go down to assets. And here you can download it for Mac OS and Windows. So this Windows version looks like it might be for ARM64. So what I'm gonna do is go to eris-windows.zip because I'm going to be using this on Windows and click it to download. And then once the zip file has finished downloading, you need to extract it to its own folder. And you should see some files that look like this. So the one we're interested in is eris.exe and open up eris and once it's loaded, you'll see this window. Now loading a game is actually incredibly easy. So click on the load tab, and then you'll see a list of all the compatible systems. So for example, if we want to load up a Sega Mega Drive game or Sega Genesis game, go all the way down to Sega and then find Sega Mega Drive and then click it. And then once the navigation window opens, you just need to find your game file and open it. And it's as simple as that and the game should begin loading. Now currently I've got the game on pause and I did that by going to tools and pause emulation. But hopefully that gives you the gist of how to load up games. Now currently the window showing the game is very small and you can make it bigger by going to settings, size, and then you can select a multiplier to make the window bigger. So currently it's set to double the size, but if I want to quadruple it, I can just go to 4x and it makes the window larger. Move that back to the center. If you'd like to make the window even bigger you can just go to maximize but if you do decide to do this I do recommend you go to settings, output and then make sure you've got scale integer selected. This will make sure that there's no distortion in the image. Now I'm just going to shrink this down again. Now let's have a quick look at some of the settings. If we go to settings, so as I mentioned before, you can go to the size tab to increase or decrease the window size. If you go to output, you can define which kind of scaling mode you want. Personally, I generally just leave it on scale integer. I think it's the way to go, especially if you want to avoid pixel distortion. I also recommend keeping aspect correction and adaptive sizing ticked. Next, one of the most exciting things about Eris is the shader section. Now, if you're a RetroArch user, some of these may look very familiar to you. So Eris appears to use the same shader library as RetroArch. So if you want to apply a CRT filter, you can go to CRT and select whichever one you want. So for example, if I go to CRT Royale, and if I unpause the game, go back to pause, you'll notice a CRT filter has been applied to the image. And let's go back to settings and shader. And if you want to remove a shader, you can just go to none and it should remove it. Next, go to boot options. And here you can define which region system you want to use. So if you're American, Japanese or Europe, you can define that here. And if you're using a system such as the PlayStation 1, and if you want to skip over the system booting screens like the PlayStation logo and the Sony Entertainment logo, you can just click on fast boot and that should allow you to skip over that stuff. Next is mute audio and this allows you to turn the audio on and off. Next one down we have show status bar and you can toggle that. So basically that's this bar at the bottom here. So currently I've got the game on pause and you can see a little status bar has appeared. So if I untick the status bar, you'll see that the status bar has gone from the bottom. And then next one down is video. Let's check that out. And here you can adjust the color and various other emulator settings. We also have an audio sub menu, which allows you to control the volume. And we have an input option that allows you to map your keys. Next up is hotkeys. And these are very useful. So if you're a RetroArch user, some of these will look very familiar to you. So for example, if you want to toggle full screen on and off, if you just double click this, you can assign a keyboard button. So if I assign F for example, so if I've selected F as the hotkey for toggling full screen on and off, if I close this, if I go back to the game, if I press F, it should make the game full screen. And if I press F again, it should shrink it back down. 
and you can assign keys for the other hotkeys too. Next, if we go to emulators, here you can enable and disable which systems you'd like to appear in Eris. So for example, if I untick PC Engine and then close this, next time when I go to Load and I go to NEC, PC Engine will disappear from here. And if you want to reinstate it, just go back to Emulators, tick it, close it, go to Load, NEC, PC Engine appears again. I imagine this is quite useful if you are only interested in a few systems and not everything, but feel free to do whatever you want. Next one down is Options. And here you can enable and disable a few options such as rewind and run ahead. So rewind is obviously if you want to rewind within a game. And run ahead is if, you, if you're experiencing latency or input lag in a game. You can check this and it will remove one frame of input lag. This won't necessarily work for every game. I mean some games it could end up kind of messing up the way you play the game. But feel free to experiment on a game to game basis. Next one down is firmware. Now, some systems require BIOS files, especially CD-based systems such as the PlayStation 1. And if you want to assign a BIOS file, just scroll down, go to PlayStation. Here you can see it requires a BIOS file for different regions. Say, for example, you have a European BIOS file and you want to add it to play your European PS1 games. You just click this, go to Assign, and then your folder navigator should open up and then just point to wherever the BIOS file is. Awesome. Now, if you go to the next option down, which is paths. So for the meantime, I would probably just leave this as it is. But if you have a folder with all your BIOS files, for example, go to firmware, go to assign, and then navigate to wherever your BIOS folders are, and then go back to firmware. And then if you click on scan, it should automatically scan the folder for all your BIOS files. So if I click that now, and it just takes a few moments to do it. And there we go. It's picked up a few of the BIOS files. I do believe it doesn't pick up BIOS files if they're nested in subfolders, so you probably just want to have all the BIOS files in the root of a folder, because I don't think it scans folders within folders. But feel free to give it a go. Next, if we go back to paths, you can also assign a folder for your save files, screenshots, and arcade games. Personally, I leave them as they are, but you can do what you want. Next, go to Drivers, and here we can select a video driver. Currently, it only offers OpenGL and Direct3D. Feel free to use whichever one works best on your system. If you're finding your audio isn't working, if you just go to the audio driver, select one of the others, and click Apply, and hopefully you'll have better luck. And finally, we have Debug, and I have no idea what this means. Hopefully someone who's clever can let me know in the comment section. And let's close this. Great, now just a few more options to show you. If you go to Tools, you'll notice you'll be able to load and save your save states, and you have nine slots to choose from. And if you go down, you can capture a screenshot in game. You can also pause the emulation, and you can also use something called Frame Advance, which allows you to remain in like a paused state, but allows you to advance a frame at a time. So for example, if you focus on the American Gladiators logo here, and just look at this section behind it, and if you go to Tools and go to Frame Advance, you'll notice it moves a frame by frame. So let's show you one more time. There we go. And if you go back to Tools, you'll notice some more kind of technical options here. This won't be useful to most people, but if you're a bit more technically minded uh, when it comes to games, you might find this useful. You'll be able to look at the live memory view, live graphics view, and, and various other things. So I'll show you maybe one or two options. If you go to manifest, you'll see it shows you some information based on the ROM. If you want to add cheats to the game, you can do that here. So for example, in the description, just type in the name of the cheat. So maybe infinite health. And if you know the code for infinite health cheat, you can just type that here. I'm sure you can find it online. So, and if I go to save, let me move that across. And then here you can enable and disable the cheat. And if you want to delete the cheat altogether, you can just go to delete. And next we've got memory viewers, graphics viewers, and, and various other things, but I won't go to that in this video. Let's close this. And there's one more thing I want to show you. So if you go to quit and go back to the Aris folder. Now, once you've closed it, you'll notice a few more little bits and pieces will show up in this folder. Now, for those of you that are used to using RetroArch and shaders in RetroArch, you'll notice a shaders folder here. So if you open this, you'll have access to all of the shaders that are available in Aris. And one thing you can also do is you can add your own shaders and you can add custom shaders here too. So if you like using shaders such as Cyberlab or Sunken or various others, you'll be able to install them here and use them in Eris. I've tried using my own Retro Crisis shader presets here 
and it appears to be a bit hit and miss. Some of the presets seem to work well and some don't work at all. And I'm not 100% sure if it's down to some kind of version difference or something, but in theory, your own custom shader presets and whatnot should work fine here. Anyway, I hope you found this video useful. This has been Retro Crisis. Thank you for watching.